when we classify stress we can classify it in many ways and one way is described here so it can be classified depending upon the direction of the force acting on it on the body on the cross section you can say that or you can say the resistive force is developed inside the body so when we have direction of the the resistive force perpendicular to the resistive area then we call it normal stresses and when it is tangential to that area then we call it shear stress so the normal stress can again be divided classified in two that is longitudinal stresses and one is bulk stresses i just go to explain this what are the what is the difference between them and we also discuss about we will also discuss about tensile stress and compressive stress so th this is the broader classification let's take them one by one then now i am starting with the longitudinal stress so you can see that in longitudinal stress the direction of force that is acting on the body is along the axis so here it is perpendicular to the cross section so it depending upon the depending upon its direction we can call it tensile and compressive if the tendency is to decrease the length so change in length is negative so that means it is compressive so in this the change in length is positive that is we the tendency deformation is to increase the length so this is how we explain the longitudinal stress and one of its example is so you can see here one example and you can easily understand which area we are taking so here let's assume that there is a lamp which is having which is having some weight and it is putting force downward force so on the ceiling we have a rigid support and it is the lamp is fixed or you can say it is hanging with some a wire which is having the radius the downward force is there so if i ask you to find out the stress so here it is it is the force divided by cross section area so you can see in the free body diagram of the wire we have the force because now upper side force where it is coming from it is coming from the reaction and the cross section area that is the cross section area of the wire this cross section area of the wire so the normal stress is p by the area so this is about the tensile stress and compressive stress so now when we talk about volumetric stress a set of forces sometime act that change its volume and this change in volume is due to the external applied forces and this type of stress is called volumetric stress when the body this is the normal body with, without any external forces when the external force is applied on the top it is fixed from the bottom so obviously there must be some a reaction force that is opposite to this f external so it must be equal to f external otherwise the body will move so now the it, it will deform like this so it, this uh, side will this side will tilt with an angle theta so this is how body deform in the shear stress so here the area will be the a area what we consider will be the area of this section or you can say this section the top layer on which the external force is applied so that will be f external by area so for understanding this let's take an other example 
प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल इज सपोज देर आर टू टू प्लेट्स दैट आर जॉइंट विद टू प्लेट्स दिस इज वन एंड दिस इज टू दीज आर जॉइंट विद अ रिविट देर इज सम रिविट एंड फ्रॉम द क्रॉस सेक्शन यू कैन से साइड व्यू यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज प्लेट वन दिस इज प्लेट टू एंड देर इज अ पुल across these plates and this is the rivet so if i draw the free body diagram of the rivet so you can see that this is the cross section this cross section this corresponds to this section so on the top there is a one force is there and another force is here so this is experiencing a shear force at this section that is f and that f is equal to external applied force so that's why the shear stress is tau p by a so now which a that is cross section of this this one is circular circular cross section so if i enlarge it so let's this be the cross section and on this there is the force p and the area this is the area so i think you understand about the basic about these stresses so its classification i hope you understand this basic classification of stress